So in the series of short videos, this lecture is on cis and trans regulatory sites or regulatory elements. This is the usual disclaimer. Okay, what exactly is meant by cis and trans regulatory sites? So we know that for an organism, particularly prokaryotic organism, it is important that genes are expressed only when required because this helps in optimal utilization of the available resources okay because it has got scarce resources so optimal utilization of those resources is very important for its survival so it expresses genes only when they are required otherwise they remain switched off and we also know that gene expression is best regulated at the level of transcription in case of prokaryotes at least gene regulation is uh, gene expression is best regulated at the level of transcription. Cis regulatory elements abbreviated as CRE and trans regulatory elements or trans regulatory sites abbreviated as TRE, they play a significant role in the regulation of gene expression. Okay, so they help the organism regulate the expression of gene as per the requirement. Now, cis regulatory elements are regions of non coding DNA which regulate the transcription of neighboring genes. So, they will influence the regulation of genes which are adjacent to them, next to them. They are neighboring genes adjacent to them. On the other hand, trans regulatory elements or trans regulatory sites, they work, their work is mediated by a diffusible product. The diffusible product in majority of the cases is the protein. Sometimes it can be RNA also, which regulate the expression of genes which are located at a place near or at a distant place. Genes can be located next to the site, genes can be located at a distant place or even on a different molecule, different allele. So irrespective of its distance from the site, those genes will be regulated because the effect of TRE Transregulatory element is mediated through a diffusible product. Very often, cis regulatory element is site of binding for a transregulatory element. Okay, so the diffusible product coded by transregulatory element very often goes and bind to the cis regulatory element. So let us understand what is the difference between the two. Cis regulatory element or cis sites are sites which function by being recognized. You must remember this sentence, by being recognized, they are called as cis acting sites. And characteristically, they will regulate genes which are adjacent to them, okay, which are neighboring. So it is a characteristic of any site that is physically contiguous, physical closeness is necessary to the site it controls. And third is it remains unaffected by the presence of other alleles of the site. So we'll understand this by taking one example. On the other hand, transacting sites are sites which function by producing a diffusible product. Diffusible product is usually a protein. Sometimes it can be RNA also, and they are called as transacting sites. The diffusible product can act on relevant sites present on the same or different DNA molecule, okay? It can act on those genes which are present on the same DNA at a place near to the site, transacting site, or at a place distant to the transacting site, or genes may be present in altogether different molecules also. The presence of other allele can restore the originality. We'll understand this, this particular point in both the cases by taking an example. So let us understand this by taking one example. So the example, let us understand that this is one operon, very common operon called LAC operon. So there is a regulatory gene called LAC I. These are, this is the control region. You have a promoter, we got an operator over here, and these are the structural genes, like Z, like Y, and like A. And you know that this operon is an inducible operon. It gets expressed when lactose is present and it gets switched off when lactose is, uh, it gets expressed when lactose is present and it gets switched off when lactose is absent, right? Like I, regulatory gene, it's a transacting gene. It's a transacting site. It's a transacting regulatory element, right? 
because it functions by coding for a diffusible product and what is that diffusible product the diffusible product is a repressor protein the diffusible product is a repressor protein so this product repressor protein can act on these genes located close by this this diffusible product repressor protein can act on this operator located close by this can act on the same site which is located at, at a distant place also and this can act on and altogether another operator located on a different molecule okay because lec i functions by coding for a diffusible product so this diffusible product can act on a site which is close to it it can act on a site which is present at a distant place or it can act on a site which is located on some other molecule allele okay and let's say let's say if this i is mutant okay what is going to happen this operon is going to be constitutively expressed irrespective whether lactose is present or absent and let's say if i put a wild type i if i put a wild type i uh, this is another allele of this i which is wild type what is going to happen the repressor protein from this wild type i will come and bind to this operator so in the absence of lactose this operon will remain switched off that means original condition is going to be restored by putting a wild type allele of the uh, transacting site so the effect of transacting site is affected in presence of a allele okay take another example operator operator is cis acting operator is cis acting this operator is cis acting because it functions by being recognized and who recognizes it it is recognized by repressor protein it is recognized by repressor protein so let's say this operator is mutant what is going to happen this operon is again going to be constitutively expressed irrespective of presence or absence of the lactose okay now if i put a wild type operator an allele of this mutant operator which is wild type so will this restore the originality that means inducibility of the operon the answer is no okay because these sites work by being recognized they don't code for a divisible product so presence of a wild type allele is not going to affect the status of this particular operon this operon will continue to remain expressed it will be constitutively expressed whether lactose is absent or present when the operator is mutant and incorporation of a wild type allele of the operator is not going to affect that particular status okay this is the fundamental difference between cis sites and trans sites similarly promoter it is also cis acting because it functions by being recognized and who recognizes it rna polymerase recognizes it it is recognized by rna polymerase terminator okay so terminator is located here let's say so this terminator is also cis acting because it also functions by being recognized and who recognizes it it recognizes it rna polymerase okay so the fundamental difference between the two is that cis sites function by being recognized and trans regulatory elements or trans sites or trans acting sites they function by coding for synthesizing a divisible product very often in majority of the cases it is a protein in some cases it can be rna also thank you